We're in Venice. Welcome to the GCN News Show. In this week's show, we round up the action from the final week of the Giro d'Italia, the Bayern Rundfahrt, the Tour of Belgium, plus we've got our usual weekly features. The final week of the Giro d'Italia was filled with mountains, snow and controversy. Stage 16 saw the riders ride over the Gabbia and the Stelvio, two iconic, if a little snowy and cold, climbs. The descent of the Stelvio was rumoured to be neutralised and apparently a red flag was shown to the peloton. However, a small group including rider Heschedal and Nairo Quintana separated themselves off the front of the bunch on the descent, with Quintana eventually winning the stage with a gap of over four minutes to Rigoberto Uran, who had been in the pink jersey up to that point and whose team claimed the race had in fact been neutralised and that Uran had obeyed this order. The next day saw controversy as the team managers met before the stage to discuss whether or not they would go ahead with the race and what action, if any, should be taken against those who had apparently flouted the neutralisation rule on the descent of the Stelvio. In the end, the team managers decided to take no direct action, so stage 17 went ahead. Stefano Parazzi of Bardiani CSF took the win, which was his team's third stage win in the Giro, a great effort from the Pro Continental squad. On stage 18, another breakaway got away building up an advantage of around six minutes by the base of the final climb. From this group, Julian Arredondo took the win, sealing his spot in the King of the Mountains jersey too, in what's been a great first ever Grand Tour for the young Colombian. There was no respite for the riders as stage 19 was a 27 km uphill time trial. The first seven kilometers were fairly flat, which meant that many of the riders faced the conundrum of whether to use a time trial or a road bike. Eventual winner Nairo Quintana settled for both options. He used his time trial bike for the flat first seven kilometers and switched to his road bike for the remainder of the stage. Fabio Roux, who was impressed throughout the race, impressed again, coming in second place just 17 seconds behind the Colombian. Stage 20 saw the riders face the feared Monte Zonclan. Another large breakaway group went clear, featuring riders such as Michael Rogers, Nicholas Roach and Dario Cataldo, the man from Sky in the Break, again. They hit the base of the final climb together and it was Rogers and Bongiorno of Bardiani CSF, who were the two in the lead. However, a spectator tried to assist Bongiorno and caused him to stumble and unclip his foot. Rogers didn't know what had happened and rode on to victory with Bongiorno falling back and eventually taking third place behind a resurgent Franco Pelazzotti. Uran and Quintana crossed the line together, meaning that Quintana sealed the pink jersey and Uran took second place overall, and Fabio Aru held on to his third place on the podium. We spoke to some of the riders ahead of the final stage of the Giro to ask them what their defining memories of the race were. Can you sum up your Giro in a couple of words for us? Probably. <laughs> Happy it's over now. <laughs> One stage to go. That's good. <laughs> ben, how about you? Giro in a couple of words. Hard, exciting, looking forward to going home. Thanks, it's over. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good ride. The, the stage of Gavia was incredible and it will be a, it will be a, it stay in my head and I think I'm happy to finish it. As you can see, some of them just couldn't wait to get home and the mood on the final stage was relaxed until they hit the finished circuits in Trieste when small attacks started flying. Eventually, Luca Mezgek of Giant Shimano took a sprint win, proving that Giant Shimano's sprinters aren't just John Dagenkolb and Marcel Cattell. On the podium, it was Quintana, followed by Uran and Aru. Another Colombian, Julian Arredondo, took the King of the Mountains jersey, an impressive ride in his first ever Grand Tour. Could Quintana's win at this Giro be the first of many? Let us know. The biggest road race in Germany saw classic specialist Fabian Cancellara return to racing to prepare for the second half of his season. Stage one was won by Heinrich Hausler of IAM Cycling. His teammate, Matthias Frank, won the stomach finish on stage two, Stage three was taken by Daryl Impey. Stage four was a time trial that Geraint Thomas won. And stage five was won by young Irish hope, Sam Bennett, riding for NetApp Endura. His time trial win meant that Thomas took home the overall. Even more big names were in action at the Tour of Belgium, where we saw Tom Bonin take the opening two stages. Tony Martin took the time trial on stage three and with that, the overall lead. Andre Greipel won the bunch sprint on stage four with an impressive match of Van der Poel, who only last year won the World Junior Road Race Championships, taking fourth place in that bunch sprint. And the fifth stage was won by Paul Martin. Tony Martin won the overall. It's time for Caption of the Week. Last week, we gave you this photo. And the winner is Callum Delaney. Caption, 
Roland rejects Europe Car's new steel musettes. Get in touch, Callum, and we'll get something in the post for you. If you'd like to win a prize this week, we want you to caption this photo of Giant Shimano's team car. What have we got on the channel for you this week? On Monday, we had our regular Maintenance Monday slot, where we showed you how to fit a Campagnolo chain. Tuesday, it's Newsday. And if you like Road Bike Party too, make sure you check out our video with Italian trial star, Brumotti. Wednesday, how to ride in the heat. Thursday, we finally have our updated top 10 basic cycling mistakes. On Friday, we speak to Specialized about their new aero helmet. And on Saturday, Amelia Farlin takes us through her Wiggle Honda Pro Bike. It's been a busy couple of weeks in tech with SRAM Wireless, the Pinarello Dogma F8, the Specialized Tarmac, and the new Campagnolo Mechanical Group Set. However, this week's Tech of the Week is something a little more basic that a few more of us can afford. Tech of the Week is the updated SRAM Red Wi-Fi cassette. It's been the saviour of all SRAM riders' legs this week at the Giro, as they now have the option of either a 30 or a 32 top gear. This, of course, means no more grinding to the halt on the Zonkalan, and as it's 11 speed, the jumps between the cogs will be far smaller. We're going to steer away from the Giro with this week's Tweet of the Week because we absolutely loved the Tour de Fjords in Norway's live Twitter feed. This week's tweet is Tour de Fjords. Just speculating here, but some of the pro Conti guys helping out might not have to pay for their drinks tonight. And let's face it, drinks are notoriously expensive in Norway. Strava Club news. There are some very familiar names at the top of the Strava Club leaderboard, with Mario Fonseca and Cycle Doctor number one up there as usual. However, as it's been a climbing week at the Giro, this week's winner is Matthew Carnell, who climbed over 17,000 meters this week. Well done, Matthew. Get in touch and we'll get a prize on its way. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our Giro content. Don't forget to share, comment, and like our videos. And if you haven't already, subscribe to GCN. <laughs> Click here to see all of our videos from the Giro d'Italia this year. And click on me to subscribe to GCN. The new specialized tarmac was launched at the start of this year.